What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Down South Expeditions. This is one of our viewer requested videos. Uh, I've had a few comments about how I, as a professional detailer, that's my trade, that's what I do for a living, that's how I forward my overlanding, all those adventures and stuff that you guys get to see on camera. But how do I go about cleaning my own vehicle? So as you guys know, I have the XLT Ford Ranger here and after our last trip, it's gotten pretty muddy. So I just want to go over a few things today. I'm going to do, there's going to be a two part series. Um, this is going to be more of how I clean my truck. This is, this applies to everybody. And then the other series is going to be how I protect it. I have Adam's graphene ceramic coating on here. Um, I'm going to be kind of doing a review on that. If I think that's something that you guys should, uh, should go towards other than just the typical ceramic coating, it does have some benefits. It does have some drawbacks and we're going to go over that in the other video. But for this one, I'm going to show you guys how to properly wash your trucks and or you know any overland vehicle that you're always getting nasty if you want to keep the paint in the best shape that you can because obviously this is also a daily driver so i want to make it look as best as i can even when i do get a few scratches here and there on the trail i want to be able to kind of not necessarily have to buff those every time but what i can do to help make those more noticeable over time so all right guys so we're going to go ahead and start washing the truck just here's a couple of b-roll shots we're going to start by pressure washing it off and then we're gonna get into actually how I clean the truck in just a second. Okay, so before I start washing the truck, a little pro tip, especially if you have Max Tracks, Max Tracks and you have to use them, remove them first because there's gonna be dirt and mud stuck in those Max Tracks and what's gonna happen is after you start washing them off, once you finish washing the truck and you get it looking really nice and then you go to dry it and then you take off down the road, all that mud that's gonna come out of the Max Tracks is gonna go right onto your clean paint that you just washed. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the Max Tracks and then I'm gonna start washing the truck. You guys might have noticed I am missing one of the screw on bolts here that fell off going down the road the other day because there was so much mud around the thread of the bolt here that it didn't even get threaded on. So unfortunately, lost that one somewhere on the interstate on the way back home. So I'm just going to take the max tracks and put them right here and then I'm going to go give those their separate cleaning, pressure wash them off, all that good stuff, which is going to bring me right into my next point is what you guys are going to need or maybe not exactly what you need to wash your truck when it gets really muddy, but what as a professional I would absolutely recommend. So let's talk about that right now. Okay, so after you've taken your truck and gotten some mud on it, like some of these big blocks that I got out of the max tracks just a second ago and that my dog's chewing on. One thing that you're gonna need is a good pressure washer. Um, anyone will do, I, for my business, I use the the Home Depot brand. I think it's the Ryobi. Um, it's the $89 one, super affordable. You can get great water pressure out of those. They're not gonna have the most flow. At my home shop, I have the uh, Krenzler, a Krenzler unit, which is super awesome, especially when I get a ton of mud on the truck. It has a lot more water flow. And when you have a ton of mud on here, what you don't want is a ton of pressure. You want more flow because um, if you guys are into detailing, you know when you get a lot of mud on your paintwork and you go blasting it with super, really super high PSI water, what happens is, is it acts like a sandblaster. So if you started with a really nice, you know, if you had a black truck or something like that, you got some mud on it and then you go hardcore blasting it with 2,000 something PSI, that's probably not going to be the best and over time even if you are using the correct wash methods that I'm going to show you guys here in just a second you're definitely going to notice some uh, some wash marks and stuff like that uh, you know in the future okay so before I even start with the good satisfying cleaning of the outside of the truck I'm always going to start with my frame here um, and then one tip that I can give you guys if you have access to a front yard or something like that where you don't mind the mud going, having the mud on the dirt and not having to worry about it is a lot better than having to spray it off of your concrete because uh, with experience, when you get this much mud on a vehicle, it does not want to come off of the concrete and you'll be out there shoveling it with a shovel for the next hour after you finish washing your truck. So we're going to go ahead and spray off the frame here and I'm going to show you guys a few tips and tricks on how I get the frame really clean without actually having to get up under there and scrub it by hand.
Alrighty, so now that I've kind of sprayed off the undercarriage, I mean, I didn't do nothing crazy. Um, one tip that I can give you guys is when you are under there sp spraying everything off, spray from multiple angles. Um, if you just spray this way, you're going to miss stuff that's only accessible that way. I'm not sure if that makes sense or not. And then after spray off the undercarriage, having a foam cannon is awesome. So what I have for my undercarriage frame, all that kind of stuff, <laughs> this is... i uh, got dog barking over here. This is half purple power and half water. You can use any wheel cleaner you like. If you just have some old wheel cleaner laying around, that works just fine. I'm gonna spray all of my fender wheels with these and obviously all up underneath the undercarriage. I'm gonna let that set for about 10 minutes. That way I don't have to scrub too much and after it's kind of saturated on there, it'll pull off a lot of that mud and keep anything from rusting and stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay guys, so I've let the foam sit underneath the frame and fender wheels for about 10 minutes and I've already sprayed it off so I'm going to spray out the bed of the truck which is something I like to do before I go cleaning you know, the cab and the rest of the truck just because that's going to fly out a lot of mud and stuff like that. So I'm going to spray the bed out and then we're going to start washing the truck off before it gets dark. So the moment you've all been waiting for the grand finale, spraying the mud off of this thing. Let's see how the Adams graphing coating shears off the mud on the truck. The mud's been on there, obviously you can tell, it's completely dry, it's been on there about a week now. So let's see how it does. So, not too bad. Uh, it's definitely still stained. The truck is gonna need to be hand washed, so I'm probably gonna do that in the morning. It's getting really cold and dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off the rest of the truck. You guys get to see that, and then I'll pick up tomorrow on actually washing it and all that good stuff. everybody so now it is about three days later and I'm finally get some time to wash the truck tons of cars have been washed this week except for my own so I'm going ahead and start up and get the whole thing rinsed off I'll take you guys through the foam cannon process all that stuff uh, how you know how I mix my ratios everything like that what soap I use what wheel cleaner I use how do I get everything back to best as it can be so we're gonna jump into that right now and I hope you enjoy it Alrighty guys, so for wheel cleaner, fender wheel cleaner, and tire, all in one, I'm using PNS Brake Buster. Try to get a pretty good amount on there, you don't need nothing crazy. Spray the barrels, the entire tire, and then I'll throw this in there. Five gallon container of this stuff for about $90, and if you're not using it for commercial or business use like I am, I would honestly just go ahead and buy you a five gallon container. It's gonna last you, if you're using it for one or two vehicles, maybe three or four years and the stuff obviously it doesn't just get old just sitting around. So I would recommend that. And like I said, I can clean everything with this. So I'm gonna start out with my wheel brush and clean the fender wheels.
frame. And my little tiny leaf frames back there. Alright, wash that out. I'll grab my higher cleaner brush here. Give these a good scrub. And guys, I don't always scrub the tires. Um, if I'm just doing a maintenance wash on the truck, I haven't been off-roading, I won't scrub them. I'll just spray it with the wheel cleaner. Get the old tire shine off of there and then keep cleaning the wheel. Alrighty, so now that I've cleaned the wheel, I mean, excuse me, the tire, I'm gonna grab my little detail brush here. I like to start with the inside of the wheel. You can start with the outside, it doesn't really matter. Give that a good clean. I got a little beadlock part. Excuse me, the fake beadlock part. I will bring you guys in after I get finished. The wheels already are looking pretty rough. Not in the sense of they're still dirty, but scratched up. It's tough to see, but when you do off-roading, that's what you get. Especially when you do like I did and go up in the wheel size. But regardless, we're going to move on to the front and keep going. As you guys can see, the uh, Rebels have taken quite the beating. Mmm. If you guys want to see it, drop a comment below. I will do a full polish on these wheels. The entire outer uh, ring where they're taking all the abuse. If you guys are interested in that, on how you can get those scratches out, it is possible, especially even on these black painted wheels. So comment below if you want to see that. Alrighty, so for soap, in the foam cannon and in the wash bucket, I've got my Keys 37 SI2 Auto Wash. I get this stuff at Advance. You can also find it on Amazon, all that good stuff. Got about... For money, for when it's money like this, I do about three squirts in here just for a little bit of extra soapiness and then about two in the wash bucket. And I'm going to foam the truck up. Yeah, I've already sprayed it off. I sprayed it off the other day. So I'm going to foam it first, let that sit on there for about five minutes. If you're in the summer and the sun is out, you might not be able to get away with five minutes. But right now, as you can tell, it's overcast. It might even rain soon. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to let it sit on there. And then I'll rinse the truck off, rinse all the soap off of it, foam it again and then I will start washing it after that.
Alrighty, so I've sprayed the truck off. I've got all the foam off of it. Now I'm going to re-foam it again and actually start washing the truck. And we're going to do that right now. Okay, so as far as my wash process goes, I've been using the same one for quite a while now. Uh, when my truck is pretty muddy, I'll spray it off, foam the whole truck, top to bottom, spray that foam off, foam it again, and then I'll start washing the truck. So as you can see here in just a second, I do use the two bucket wash method, which is one for rinsing out the wash mitt and then the other one for getting more fresh soap water on there. As far as actually cleaning the truck, I only use straight lines. You guys can see this when it is really dirty and I want to get that ceramic coating nice and clean. I'll go side to side for one pass and then up and down the other one. And that's just to help loosen up more and more of that dirt. Using the side to side and not circular washing process helps to keep the swirl marks off of the truck. If there was something to get caught up in the wash mitt or whatever, it will keep from scratching it up. Also, you can, your eyes will see circles a lot easier than they will straight lines so if you do end up scratching the truck with the wash mitt which inevitably if you're touching the vehicle you're scratching it no matter the type of wash process you're doing so going in straight lines just helps that much more Alrighty, everybody. So, as you can probably tell, it is raining now, which is aggravating. But, nonetheless, the Ranger is clean. You can definitely tell the beading has come back to the water. That is the thing with ceramic coatings. Um, when they are dirty and they haven't been properly washed in a while, you won't see the beading like you saw, you know, as you see right now. As you guys saw before, when the truck wasn't washed but just sprayed off, it had virtually no beads right here. And as you can tell, the shine has come back. The luster is there. The paint reflects insanely well. And then later on, we'll kind of do more of a damage report on uh, the, you know, the different scratches and stuff that the Rangers collected after just five overlanding trips, varying in uh, trail width and such. But you can't get much better than that out of a flake gray magnetic, I believe is what it is called from Ford. Alrighty, so that's gonna wrap it up on this one. I appreciate you guys watching the video. The truck looking good again, like it should. The paint is doing very well. The ceramic coating is doing very well. Um, I've had it on here for about six months. If you guys have any more questions about anything that I might have left out in the video, please drop it in the comments below. Uh, what tools you should get, all that kind of stuff. I will try my best to link them in the description and for the links to actually work. 95% of my products that I use whether it be in my business or just personally cleaning my truck, you can buy on Amazon. Some are a little more specialty items such as the pressure washer and, you know, some of the more detailed tools that I use for detailing. But for the most part, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, coming up soon, we'll kind of do more of a damage report where we talk about what's, uh, what's kind of scratched up on the Ranger, what can be fixed, how you can fix those type of things. And then also, if you guys want to see it, I will completely polish my wheels see how much of those scratches you really can get out of black wheels and we'll do it uh two different ways to show you guys at home how you can try to fix your wheels up especially if you're trying to sell them obviously a buyer doesn't want scratched up wheels so thanks guys for tuning in make sure you tune in next time we'll have more adventures coming up for you soon and until next time this is easton with down south expeditions peace out